Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another PhotoP tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how you can make a Minecraft banner in PhotoP. And I've been getting some requests for it, so here I am doing it. You just want to start out by going to New Project, typing in 2560 by 423. Later on, we'll change this to 2560 by 1440 because that is the size YouTube accepts. But for now, we're just going to do it like this because it's a lot easier. So just say create. Now what we're going to do is get some text. So go to defont.com or you can go down in the description below. I will have a link to this website with this font and you just want to hit download. Here's the downloaded folder. I'm just going to double click on it. Here's the font. So if I go up here to my text tool and then up to the font, I can hit load font. And now it loaded the font. So if I type in my name, make it bigger and now I just got to find the Minecraft font. So here's the Minecraft font. We got Cambit. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Just going to move that to the center for now. And now let's find a Minecraft background. All right. So I found one from online that's 1920 by 1080. So it'll be good quality. I'm just going to use this one right here. So just copy that image, control V or whatever it is to paste it and go to edit and free transform. We're going to resize this. Hold shift so it scales it proportionally. And I'm going to scale it down a little bit. There we go. Now I'm going to move my text layer on top. So we have the Cambit. I want to double click on it. Go to gradient overlay. And I'm going to change this black to a dark gray. Like that. Now I'm going to add an inner glow and change the blend mode to color dodge and turn the color to white. Now I'm going to turn the spread and size up a bit. So it's looking pretty good so far. I'm going to add a stroke, make the stroke about seven and then change the blend mode to uh, multiply and change the color to white. Now I'm going to add another stroke. So click on this plus sign again, but this time change the bottom stroke to normal blend mode and make it bigger like that. So you can see it's coming together. I might even change the glow to green. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's kind of hard to see in my opinion. Uh, but you just gotta experiment with it. I'm gonna go back to what it was before. So there we go. There's my name on it. Uh, now what we can do is we can go down here to this half circle, go to curves and go to the red channel, move it up on this line, down on this line. Go to the blue channel, move it up on this line, down on this line, and then move the, to the green channel and move them down and up again, or you could do up on the green to make it more green, but I'm going to go back down on that line. So you can see it stands out a lot more now. Um, I'm going to go back to the half circle, go to vibrance, turn up the vibrance and saturation a bit. And I'm going to go back down to the half circle, go to brightness and contrast, turn up the brightness. Turn up the contrast a bit or you can turn it down. It's up to you. Uh, now what I'm going to do is go to my text layer and hit this new layer button. It's important also to have your adjustment layers on top of everything else because it only works on stuff that's below it. So keep that in mind. But now we're going to do is click on that new layer we just made. Go to the brush tool. Go up here to this little drop down arrow. Turn the size all the way up to a, a thousand after you click on the soft mechanical. And make sure this top box is white and go ahead and click. Or actually we'll make the color of the sun. So go to yellow and make it like the color of the sun. So I'd assume it's like that. Maybe a little bit more white. And you can experiment with it. I'll put it right above. Above it so it's looking pretty good so far now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double click on my text and I'm gonna go up here to warp and change the style to something else we can experiment with these we can maybe make it rise or we could do flag so it's kind of like 
in the wind, you know? But I don't like that very much, to be honest. This looks pretty good to me. I'm actually going to go to this brightness and contrast, click on this little circle and change the contrast. I'm going to turn the brightness down a bit. To about 14 and I'm going to turn the contrast up to about 40. It's kind of hard to see behind the canvas, so I'm going to add a new layer. I'm going to go to my brush tool, turn it to black, and I'm just going to color behind it. Make sure it's below my text layer. Make it a little bit smaller. Like that. Change the blend mode to like multiply, change the opacity. So you see the difference? Makes it easier to see, which is always nice. Um, or you could even add a drop shadow on the text itself but it's all preference. You just gotta mess around with it, you know? That's one thing I want you guys to get from these tutorials is to like figure out how to do things on your own because it's not good to just follow tutorials and that's all you know. It's good to actually take stuff from the tutorials so you can, you know, do some things yourself and experiment with it. That's what makes you a good designer. So I hope you guys get that from these videos. I think this is the final banner. Looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna change the size back. So image, canvas size 2560 by 1440 and now we're back to the regular canvas size and it looks pretty weird I know um, you could just draw a box around it so just go to your rectangle tool change the color to black and just go over the top make sure you know where your banner is you can use like lines like these little color lines to be a guide so you don't mess with the banner itself you could just do that if you want, and now we're done. I'm going to leave this as a project link so you guys can use it as a template if you want. And I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like and subscribe as always, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.